Welcome everyone to the second um, in the series of three of our virtual cheese and wine pairings with Hannah and Michael Schaps. Um, this week we are doing a autumn pairing with wines and cheeses reminiscent of a little bit cooler weather as we get into fall. Um, and so today, hopefully you have the wines and cheeses that we have selected to pair or something similar. Um, thank you to Feast for teaming up with us to give us these awesome cheese boards. Um, so the wines that we are doing today are our 2016 Michael Schaps Odette. Uh, we're doing the 2016 Michael Schaps Wild Meadow Chardonnay. Um, they were jumping over to France for the third wine and we have the Maison Schaps 2015 Nuit Saint Georges. And then we are gonna finish off with our 2016 Michael Schaps Petit Verdot. Um, the cheeses that you should have hopefully are Morbier, uh, Caprino from Caramont Farms in Char outside of Charlottesville, and Aged Comte, and then we're going to finish with the Roquefort. Um, just so you know, anytime you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask a question, feel free to interrupt us. We love all the feedback. Um, but yeah, thank you. And now we're going to hop over to Hannah. Can we hear you? Can you hear me? Okay. So hi everybody. Um, welcome to our second pairing, as Ivy mentioned. Um, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, um, we kind of decided to do these pairings to give you uh, the confidence and the tools uh, to have your own pairings or to share the information that you're learning today um, with friends, with family, and kind of have a nice way to entertain at home, especially during this time where maybe going out isn't always the best option. Um, I am living and working in Burgundy, France. So here today, again, I'm in a cellar at Maison Chaps um, with our white wines that have been put into barrel after harvest this year. Um, I'm a cheesemonger and I've been living here for over a year now working in cheese um, with the goal to uh, one day export the cheese I'm tasting here back to the States to share with everybody. So with that being said, um, let's launch into our first pairing. So it's gonna be the Odette and as Ivy mentioned, the Morbier. So our pairings today are actually really AOP heavy. So that's a, a term used in France that means Appellation d'origine protectée. And it's actually um, a designation that cheeses are given to protect their savoir-faire and everything around them. So there's actually 45 cheeses, three butters and two creams that are protected um, with this name. And basically it goes everything from where they're allowed to make the cheese, what the animals are allowed to eat and drink. So it actually has to come from a certain percentage from the actual farm they live. You can't bring in feed um, from other areas. How long the cheese is able to be aged, what type of rennet is able to be used, and a lot of other things that actually protect um, the production of the cheese. So it's a very typical French um, system that kind of makes it so the really old world cheeses are not able to be copied, but they're actually, you know, original originating here um, and then they are you know able to be sold in the world the whole world and so this protection is really special so the Malbia cheese is going to be cow's milk and this actually this really nice black line is vegetable ash so this cheese is um it's made because this way because the cheese from the night before is the milk is turned into cheese and then overnight um, they sprinkle vegetable ash on it to protect it and they complete the cheese with the milk from the next day so this is an ancient ancient tradition um, where the ash was used to protect from bugs, from parasites, and it's still used today uh, to keep uh, the artistic nature of the cheese, add a little bit of saltiness and flavor. So the vegetable ash is actually either from vegetables or trees. Um, they take pine trees and they burn them and they make ash. And so that is the fun's cheese. And so the reason we paired this with the Odette today is because this cheese has a certain grassiness and earthiness that kind of cuts through the acidity of the Odette and brings out a lot of floral notes. And um, this cheese kind of like the Odette, is a, it's a blend. It's a blend of, of milk from two different days, so two different milkings. And the Odette, of course, is several different varietals named after my grandmother. Um, so I'll allow you guys to, to take a taste. So take a look at your cheese. Notice that beautiful black line, how it's kind of semi-soft. And um, try a bite and then we'll go into the wine. I guess I should jump in at this point, right? Yeah, tell us about the wine. Okay, so uh, I, I really like this pairing. The Odette, uh, if you're not familiar with this wine, is our uh, house blend. 
of of many varieties. Uh, we're trying to make a, a creative blend here, mostly aromatic varieties. This is a wine that we design and it changes every year. There's not a, it's not a recipe wine. We look at the different varietals that we have and kind of come up with a unique blend that represents the vintage, but also achieves what we want with this wine, which is a very floral, uh, aromatic wine, light on the palate. It's stainless, mostly stainless steel aged wine, uh, though. There's some older barrels, uh, uh, say Petit Men saying in this blend is from a barrel, but from older barrels. So there's no new oak to say to, to in this blend at all, but mostly it's all stainless steel. And this wine is made up of, uh, it's a lot of different varieties, so I can't memorize it. 48% Riesling, 16% Muscat, 12% Traminet, which is a hybrid of Gewürztraminer, 12% uh, Viognier, 8% Petit Men saying, and 4% Seva Blanc, which is a hybrid as well. And so it's, uh, it's a pretty unique blend, complex blend, which uh, we create. And um, I look for the different nuances to kind of come through here, even though there's a lot of different varieties, but we want the floral aromatics really to lead the way. And I think it, with this cheese, uh, it pairs nicely. But the main reason, I think this is a 2016, when this wine is young, right after it's you know bottled, it's um, a little bit lighter and fresher fruit, bright flowers, but now that this wine has been in bottle uh, for three years, it's changed and it's actually become a little bit earthier, a little rounder, richer. You get the richness of these varieties. A lot of these varieties are, are uh, known for their, their richness like Viognier and Petit Ben Sang, and that really starts to evolve over time in the bottle. And I think the richness combined with the floral notes really is pairing nicely with this cheese. Yeah, um, to jump off of that, we, we uh, initially, I was thinking of a, of a creamier cheese um, because when I think about that, I do think of that, that light, that florality, but because it is an older varietal, um, it, once again, it overpowered the cheese a bit too much. So we had to kind of switch around what we were thinking and do a cheese that's, you know, lightly aged. It's not going to be as aged as, as one of the later cheeses we'll see, but aged enough where it can stand up to this wine. And as we've mentioned, um, in our last pairing, we're looking, when we pair things, we're looking to kind of create harmony, um, not discord. So we're looking to accentuate each product and not hide anything or not over, you know, overcompensate or take over a flavor profile. It's just supposed to be a balance, a really nice kind of balance. So yeah, able to I think it really um, it reminds me almost of a little bit of a, a style of a Jura white wine, and it has a little bit more of that almost like straw earthiness to it. Uh, but the, the aromas are still. You get some of that muscat comes through a little bit of that rose petal characteristic still comes through, even though it's been, you know, aged for a little bit. And I really think and so. For those who don't know, Jura is the mountain region next to Burgundy, um, and that's actually where Morbier and Comte um, they're made. So they're made right next to Burgundy. Um, it's about an hour and a half away in a beautiful mountainous region with really lush pastures and amazing grass. And so it's really close to here, and it's a, it's a beautiful place that I've, I've been able to see and visit. And there's a lot of cows, and they make a lot of really good cheese. I just I really like the, the texture of the cheese and, and, and the texture of the wine how they pair together. I think it's really a great match in terms on the palate that the, the acid in the wine is not um, too aggressive. I think it's just now this aged, it really kind of blends nicely with, with the cheese. And I think it's been, you know, surprised. And I'm, I'm, we did this when we designed the, uh, the pairing and uh, I liked it, but I'm actually, it's really, I had this bottle open for a little bit and I think me having it open and right it really helped. So yeah. does anybody, does anybody have any cheese comments? Is 45% fat. <laughs> uh, so cheese is 45%, you know, fat. So it has, a, it has that nice, you know, richness and, and creaminess. And it really, you know, if you have leftovers, which I hope, you know, you're able to eat it all, but if not, it's a really great grilled cheese. Cheese. I oh. mean, this stuff is like, it's like no other. It's great. I highly recommend. It's probably what I'll do if I can't finish it. <laughs> Anyone have questions about the pairing, about wine, about cheese? Anyone uh, not like this pairing? For any, for anything that you don't like about the, the way these go together? Jean likes it. <laughs> All right. Anybody? And actually, okay, thumbs up, you know, thumbs up across the board. Thumbs up, that's good. Good. I was gonna say there's a domestic version of this cheese coming out of um, considered Barnwell Farm, I think in Vermont, they do a very similar cheese. So it would be cool, you know, after you do this to do your own kind of comparison between old world and new world, trying doing the same exact thing um, and see how they kind of stand to each other. 
Yeah, and I think this uh, this wine, uh, getting back to the wine a little bit, you know, the, we want something that's you know light, fr floral, fresh. I'm, you know, this is starting to show a little bit of nuttiness, but Odette is really a great aperitif wine uh, with cheese before the meal. If you have cheese before the meal, uh, seafood, lighter poultry, uh, but really. In our lineup, a lot of the wines, we have a lot of heavy wines, whether it's the Petit Mansang or the Chardonnay or the Red, but we really wanted to create something that was a little more lighter and fresher uh, with the floral notes that um, can go with cheeses or go with, uh, you know, before dinner uh, appetizers and, and lighter fare. So I think that's you know, what you really the objective of this wine was, and I think uh, it's uh, showing well in that, that uh, fashion right now. And the Muscat, I don't know if everyone knows Muscat, but I still, even though 16% Muscat, it really seems to come through pretty strongly. It's a very aromatic variety. It really can take over a blend. 